Hi, I'm Shane Tubbs. I'm the Chief Scientific Officer at the Seattle Science Foundation, and it's uh, my pleasure to welcome Dr. Cecilia uh, soderberg nauclair from the Karolinska Institute in Sweden, uh, who's visiting us today and uh, gave a presentation um, that uh, was welcomed, and uh, we're um, happy for you to be here. Thank you for having me here. Um, I think uh, we'll start off and maybe you could uh, tell the audience uh, a little bit about yourself, where you're from, uh, uh, how you got interested in uh, brain tumor. Well, that's actually a long story. Okay. So uh, I started an MD-PhD program at the Karolinska in 1987. And very early on, just after a couple of weeks, we did a project where we were going to select uh, something to work with uh, for a student project. And I selected to work with CMV in transplant patients. And that became actually my area of focus. And I've been working with that now since, ever since. Wow. And the first uh, uh, many years, I did study the virus and, and uh, how this virus uh, coexists with us, how it reactivates and uh, how it's uh, uh, activated, especially by inflammation. And then re that relates to many different inflammatory diseases. Sure. And I said 15 years ago that oncology is not really our interest. But uh, uh, that has now changed to that the whole group that I'm working with today okay. and that I'm leading are actually focused on CMV cancer related projects. And that came through the discovery that Charles Cobbs made, that yeah. uh, he saw that CMV was active in glioblastomas. And uh, uh, that said, I just thought that I need to see that for myself. Okay. And uh, we did repeat what Charles had found. We got some help from him because uh, he had established special techniques to look for the virus that we had not utilized before in the CME field. So that was new to us. And by using that, we can confirm that uh, in principle, all glioblastomas that we look at are in infected by CME. So we uh, used the knowledge that we have for the virus and how the virus coexists with its host, how it's uh, avoiding detection from the immune system, how it creates good uh, uh, virus factories, so it affects many different cell functions and they are relevant in tumor biology. biology. And then, of course, if the virus is present there, that gives us a way of uh, treating the virus and see if we can get improved outcome of, of glioblastoma patients. And uh, the current treatment data that we have suggests that uh, this uh, uh, that targeting the virus is actually one new way to go mm -hmm. in order to treat brain tumor patients. So, wow, that's very interesting. So, CMV is such a, a ubiquitous uh, entity. Um, most of us probably have been. Uh, introduced to it during our lifespans. So how do you pick out um, the bad CMVs versus the good CMVs? Well, that's a very, very good question. And in fact, uh, when I became interested in CMV in, uh, in glioblastomas and, and then also working with the virus in other cancer forms, it was very obvious to me that this virus was not behaving like the wild type virus that I had studied for many years. Mm -hmm. And uh, that actually resulted in a discovery we made five and a half years ago that there is a special variant of CMV that is active in, in cancer patients. And we see that in about 90 to 100% of tumors of different origin. So it's a very relevant question that you're bringing up. And uh, the, the virus that we have identified is extremely different from, from uh, the wild type CMV, yeah. yet very similar. And that means that it's, it's quite difficult actually to study. But we think that uh, that's uh, the difference in having uh, the wild type variant and the more uh, cancer associated virus uh, phenotype. And then how that gets into you and uh, how it gets into cancer cells. That's, of course, a whole new area of research. Sure, sure. And I guess looking at the patients uh, from patient to patient and how they respond to the wild type, uh, there's going to be lots of data generated there as well. Yeah, absolutely. And it's also so that uh, the experience that we have so far is that this, uh, this variant virus that is highly associated with cancer that lives on the wild type virus. So it's defective mm -hmm. and it needs help with the wild type virus in order to get around, which means that targeting therapies against the wild type virus will also, of course also hinder this virus to sure. become active. So it's a whole new box, I would say, and opens a door to a whole new field and, and understanding the virus in glioblastomas and as, as well as other cancer forms, I think will teach us new things and also opens for new ways of, the, of targeting the virus and also uh, that hopefully will lead to improved outcome of, of uh, not only glioblastoma patients, but also other cancer patients. Okay. How many people are in your lab uh, focused in on this? Well, we are a group of 26 people mm -hmm. and uh, many of those are clinicians that are working most of the time in the clinic. So uh -huh. in the lab, we are maybe 12 
a day that are fully focusing on on understanding the biology of CMV in cancer. So, sure. so we're keeping ourselves busy, but it is a struggle because it's uh, it's involving many steps of actually new biology that we were not aware of when we embarked on the project, of course, and, and therefore it's many technical problems to solve along the way. Mm. Mm. Are, are there any other groups in Sweden that are focused on CMV and brain tumor cancer? Um, not really with CMV. Well, actually, I would say one colleague, Peter Sierse, who is working on medulloblastoma, mm. uh, um, the, uh, the brain tumor that is most common in children, he also works with uh, an interest for CMV. Okay. Mm. Now, have you always been at the Karolinska? Yes, except for a little detour for doing my postdoc at okay. OHSU in Portland. OHSU. Oregon. Yeah. Okay. A little short stop at City of Hope in Los Angeles. Sure. Yeah. So, but otherwise, I've been based at Karolinska. I did my medical training there. I had my PhD from there. Okay. And did my postdoc and returned there. And uh, I guess I'm becoming an inventory. <laughs> <laughs> so you're from Sweden originally? Yes. Okay. Do you have family there? Yes, uh, I have my whole family there. My small family has, uh, I have three children. And oh, wow. My husband uh, uh, and, uh, of course, my sisters and uh, parents are also. Sure. How do you juggle three Sweden. children and uh, all the research you do? Well, that is actually quite difficult, <laughs> but uh, we have help and uh, we've had a nanny for 12 years. Wow. And uh, I don't know what I would have done without her, actually. So sure. cause my husband, he is a director for McKinsey, so okay. he works quite a lot. And that means that... Uh, you need help in order to juggle. Sure, uh, that's a full-time job. Life. Yes. Mm -hmm. So what do you see at 20 years from now, uh, our understanding of brain tumors and CMV and what will be going on then versus now? I would be thinking that uh, uh, understanding this virus in the brain tumors has to be taken into account in order to find a cure for this, tum this tumor. And, and I would say in analogy with the HIV infections that we didn't succeed in, in uh, getting that chronic infection to be stalled until several different antivirals were, uh, were used for right. HIV patients and that's very successful today. I think we need to use similar strategies for CME. We need to control it in different ways with antivirals virals with immunotherapy mm -hmm. and then combining that, uh, that with the conventional chemotherapies that uh, uh, that are already existing or things that will be coming out in 20 years but there has to be a large array of, uh, of different compounds that will be used in order to manage this virus sure. in this chronic infection and I think that if we do that there's actually a chance that we will get this disease under control. Do you think we'll ever come to a point where we immunize our children Early on, yeah, we we are hoping to find or or develop a, a vaccine for CMV, and of course that will be useful for these patients as well. Uh, however, so far that has not been so successful because this virus is smarter than us. <laughs> it's uh, I would say the best leading immunologist in the world. It knows more about the immune system than we do, <laughs> which means that uh, uh, whatever we try to do, it hides away from it. So we need to increase our knowledge in order to get a, a good vaccine that could work. Sure. That is said to try to eliminate the virus that we could do with with other types of viruses and that doesn't work with these chronic uh, latently infected persistent viruses um, with the knowledge that we have today. Not said that it wouldn't work in the future but uh, it is tricky at this time but you could still do things in order to improve the immune system to control the virus and sure. that is of course things that we are aiming for at the present time to teach the immune system to, uh, uh, to better control uh, the virus that is active in these tumors. Okay. What, what do you think the top um, two or three institutions in the world are that are looking at this specific entity, CMV and brain tumors? For CMV and brain tumors, that will be Charles Place and our place, I would say, as okay. are the two, two main ones. Then there are a few other ones that are popping up, of course, that are, are showing increasing interest. but. Uh, I would say that uh, for our group, we've done a lot of the basic science around it, and, and Charles did the, in, uh, the initial discovery, and he's doing a lot of work both on basic science and, and the patient-focused uh, 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 therapy uh, sure. uh, approaches that will involve also the understanding of this as well as uh, understanding the tumor from many other aspects. Mm -hmm. And I think that uh, uh, more of our colleagues are becoming aware of this, but they do little bits and pieces. Some do genetic analysis, some do um, looking at one specific uh, signaling pathway, for example. But mm -hmm. it's very good that we're getting more and more people involved in the field. And uh, we can't solve it all on our own. We need many people that are going to work with this. And, That's right. Uh, I would say presently, 
maybe 15 groups in the world are, okay. are looking at different aspects of the virus in cancer. Okay. Are, are there clinical trials going on at your institute? Uh, unfortunately not, no. because uh, we have not had funding for that. And uh, the main one that we would like to do is a randomized trial for just the, the, the drugs on the shelf that we already have data on, that it says that it's improving survival for, for these patients. But the drug co companies don't want to support this, mm. and that makes it very difficult to do it in the academic setting. So sure. that's uh, unfortunately not good for, for patients, of course, because they should be... Um, uh, evaluated if this actually works or not, right. and that's impossible to do in a randomized uh, a trial at the present time. Well, maybe in the near future things will change for the better. We hope so, but it needs to be sort of a little bit more give and take from the pharma, I think, that uh, pharma companies that just because you have a drug that has expired on its patent, if mm -hmm. it works, it mm -hmm. should be evaluated, and at the present time that hasn't worked out well. Well, thank you very much for sharing uh, your background and your research uh, with us. And uh, thank you for visiting us at the Seattle Science Foundation. Thank you very much. And thank uh, you for we, having me. You're quite welcome. We hope you come back soon. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thanks. Mm -hmm.